Today we have with us Pranav Gill in our studio. He is general manager of BMW in Sudbury, one of the very few Indian executives in the auto industry. Since we have him here today, we are going to know everything about how the luxury auto market is here. And he is going to give us, hopefully, some good tips to buy a BMW and other luxury cars. Pranav, welcome to our studio. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. So BMW is a very interesting topic. So before we get into the details and sure. nitty-gritty of BMW and luxury cars, how did you get into the auto industry and not become a doctor or engineer? Well, it's funny because when you're growing up, the one thing every Indian parent asks you is, what kind of doctor do you want to be? And um, I got into this business simply by accident. So I graduated college, and prior to college, I had some sales experience. Uh, I worked with Raman Honda mm -hmm. at his Alpha Omega location. Oh, in, in Harvard Square. Yeah, okay. so I was in the Prudential location, and we sold high-end watches, jewelry, and I really enjoyed the sales atmosphere at that point in time. So fast forwarding to after I graduated from college, uh, the job market was pretty tough. You know, it was limited. Uh, job offers out there were pretty low, and you know, I needed to make uh, a little bit more money than what the offers were out there. So I opened the newspaper one day and saw a position for a Lexus sales position at Herb Chambers Lexus in Sharon. Mm. So I said, let me try it. You know, I, I like the sales atmosphere. I love cars. Let me see what this is about, and I'll try it for a couple months, and then until I find something uh, better that I want to do. So how long you have been now with Herb Chambers? So I have been with Herb about 10 years. 10 years. 10 and years. And all the time you have been involved only with this, a BMW or luxury? Or it, luxury sales. Luxury so sales. I started with his Lexus store. Um, I gained some experience at his Mercedes locations and uh, also ran his Infinity store as the general manager there. And then also now BMW. So I've got a nice mix of all different luxury brands. I think you started with luxury right away with uh, Raman Honda there. Exactly, right? yeah, so yeah, yeah. I stayed with you. Yeah. Okay. So what is this fascination with BMW? Well, BMW, as you know, is the ultimate driving machine. Yeah. It's, in my opinion, the best combination of not only luxury, but real, true, sporty performance in an automobile. If you love driving cars, you have an aff affection with cars, and it's not just, you know, the bells and whistles, but the real driving feel is no better brand than BMW. And what has been your experience in, uh, in selling or managing a BMW store? So it's customer experience. You know, we know we have a great product. Um, I, I think that's a given. So what is the typical profile of your customer? Typical profile, you know, with the new products that BMW's uh, been coming out with, we are targeting all sorts of audience. From young graduates coming right out of school, we have perfect cars for them, affordable, lower-end cars. We, and then we have some very high-end cars that really apply to the higher-end demographic, whether it's uh, you know, uh, executives, business owners, doctors, lawyers, uh, all sorts of professions. Now, uh, what about the Indian and South Asian market for the BMW? Huge, huge. So it's been an interesting experience, especially specifically in the Sudbury location, um, we didn't have a very large Indian community coming to that store. Mm. Um, we started doing some different advertising, you know, um, with our SEM and search engine marketing. And then mainly a lot of our business is coming right through word of mouth. Mm -hmm. So it all starts with that one experience with uh, uh, an Indian couple or an Indian family, and then they send in their friends. Yeah. their families, and then we get more and more referrals. And yeah, the referral is amazing it's in the Indian It's amazing. It's absolutely referral. amazing, and it's yeah. really grown where they will call me directly. I have another sales manager uh, that's from Pakistan. They'll call him, and um, we take care of them like our friends and family. So how many BMWs are sold from your uh, month? Uh, from so your, my uh, store, sure. we've gained, uh, grown to be one of the larger BMW dealerships in the market. We average probably somewhere around 180, 200 cars a month now. Oh, 200 BMWs a month. Yeah, between and new and pre-owned. New, okay. Yeah. Now, what is the price range of the new BMWs? So new BMWs, um, the price point is now, you can get them right around $30,000. That's a minimum. Um, minimum. Okay. And then they'll go up to about 150, 160,000. Okay. So the, the cars which you sell, what is the average price? Average selling price on 
2014 was right around 45,000. 45,000. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Now, um, let's also talk about um, the leasing versus buying. Well, that's again two two great options, um, and it really depends on what your plans are with the car. See, some people are going to keep their cars whether it's four, five, six, ten years, and some people like the benefit of having a new car every few years, being under full warranty, full maintenance. The benefits of leasing are you can get a much more expensive car with less money down and typically have a lower monthly payment. You're only paying for a portion of the car over the term. So if, if I am in the market to buy a luxury car, sure. say BMW, yeah. and I am struggling, that uh, should I go for a leased car or should I buy one? When so what are the, the points I should really evaluate and pay attention to? So the evaluation to? should be how long are you really going to keep the car? Is your trend to turn your cars over a couple of years? And then what are your goals? What do you want in a car? And what is your affordability, right? What's your budget? So with leasing, you can put a lot less money down and get a hypothetically a three series for around $400 a month, mm. where if you bought it, maybe your payment would be around $800 a month, mm. uh, but you are going to be keeping the car for a long time and there's some value at the end uh, there that you have. So what is the resale value of BMW? They do really well. Uh, BMW, among luxury manufacturers, hold their values really well. The complementary maintenance certainly assists in that. So BMW is one of the only luxury manufacturers that still carries a full-blown complementary maintenance for four years and up to 50,000 miles. That means all your services are covered. You need brakes. You need oil changes. You need fluids. Any of those big items are covered and a nice, nice um, peace of mind while you're on the vehicle. Mm. What about the, in terms of the service and repair, for example, sure. like, um, like if something goes wrong with my car at mm -hmm. home, and uh, can you send somebody there, or how, how does So the go? unique part with Herb Chambers BMW of Sudbury is we offer pickup and drop off service. Mm. So I have a fleet of almost 100 loaner cars, mm -hmm. all BMWs. And um, if you schedule in advance, I will go ahead and come to your home, pick up the car, leave you a nice BMW, bring yours back when it's all done, and not only bring it back after it's repaired, but we'll wash and vacuum your car for you. And it is, uh, you know, there's no extra fee for it. It's just no part of just no buying No extra the... fee. That's a benefit that Herb Chambers provides at my location. Yeah, that's a wonderful... Uh, it's, it's, but it's not available in all the locations except yours? So not every, uh, not every location offers that particular service. With our brand, our uh, demographic, and our market, we do. Now, this leads to another question about uh, uh, pre-owned versus new ones. Sure. So tell us a little bit about that dynamics. Sure. So similar to leasing versus purchasing, right. matter of preference, right? So certified pre-owns are an amazing value because... Um, you're not paying for the initial sticker. You're not taking the depreciation on your own. What you're doing is you're buying a product that's already been depreciated, and low mileage and late models are pretty good. Right now we have 2013s, 2014s, that in a lot of cases you can spend $10,000 less by going for one of those versus a brand new one. Now the certified warranty also backs those vehicles up for up to 100,000 miles, mm -hmm. which is phenomenal. And that's, again, if you plan on keeping a car for a long time, a certified pre-owner is an unbelievable option. So if somebody who is very cautious about finance and money and, yeah. uh, and very careful about investments and all... Certified pre-owner is the way to go. That's the way case, to go. Absolutely. You, Hands you, down. you sound so certain about that. Uh, very certain about that. Excellent. Yeah. Now, um, the another interesting question I have for you is, and no, don't take any offense on this. You know, None your, taken. Your yeah, 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 yeah is uh, the, the car salesmen, especially the old car salesmen, have mm -hmm. really very bad reputation. Absolutely. And, and uh, since you manage them, so what is your uh, take on that? Well, it's interesting you uh, bring that up. And I, I remember when I first got into this industry, that, that was one hesitation I had mm -hmm. working in this industry because as a young man just getting started in the business world, my reputation is important to me sure. just as much as the industry I decide to work in. And this is why I love working for Herb Chambers. Mm. Herb got into this industry simply to change that perception of our mm. uh, automotive sales. So it all started off many, many years ago when Herb walked into a dealership. And this was down in Connecticut. It was an 
old Cadillac store, and he wanted to buy his uh, sister a, a gift, mm -hmm. or a family member a gift. So he went in, and he was poorly treated, and he did not have a great experience. And he was just coming off selling a pre previous business, the copy business, which he uh, was very successful in. He said, you know what, this is not right. This is not how a luxury experience should go. So he made an appointment with the owner the following day, and he said, you know what, uh, it, it, it's obvious you are kind of giving up on your business here. So he puts a note across the table and says, I'd like to buy your dealership. Mm -hmm. And it all started there. Now okay. we've grown to yeah. 54 dealerships. And Herb's number one, mm -hmm. number one motto is all about customer service. Mm -hmm. It's about changing the perception of this business, and it all starts from hiring. I personally, we don't have any of those bad habits in mm -hmm. our dealerships anymore. Mm -hmm. We hire the right people, we train them, we compensate them very well, and we teach them that customer first experience. Mm -hmm. What about uh, uh, in terms of the pricing, for example? Yeah. Does the price differ from one dealership to another dealership? Or the Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So. You know, price is all dependent on inventory also. Sure. Do we have the actual vehicles you want in stock? With the larger stores like Herb Chambers Group, we have the largest inventories around. Mm -hmm. All BMW dealers, all automa uh, automobile dealers generally have on new vehicles mm -hmm. the same purchase price to the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Now it's about your volume. Mm -hmm. How many cars you sell mm -hmm. allows you to figure out what you can discount them down to. Mm -hmm. So in a case like ours, we're going to be able to provide better deals mm -hmm. than a smaller dealer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what is like, you know, m basic price difference between like, you know, how much is the like maximum discount you can get from one to another one? Is there any? It, 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 there's no rule of thumb. No. Uh, you know, with the power of the internet, all the numbers are out there. Mm -hmm. Now, it's the first and foremost most important thing to do before going in and buying a car is do some research mm -hmm. it's okay to do so figure out what kind of vehicle you really want narrow it down to three or four and then work with the dealerships dealerships like ours will be full disclosure with you I have no problem telling a client you know this is the car you want this is you know X amount over our invoice or how much profit we have here mm. and this is what's a great deal and we'll even show you through services like Edmunds or other um, uh, sites online, that you're getting a better value than what they're posting as average purchase prices. Now, uh, like all of us who have bought cars, you know, when you sure. go and sit yeah. down in the dealership and the salesman comes and yeah. goes back and forth, this and that and this and that. And of course, there is a price, okay, what about this price and that price? Sure, and sure. Just like, you know, buying vegetables in the Indian market in <laughs> India, you know, bargaining. No, you negotiate everything. It seems like our, our culture is this, used to that, Yeah, right? exactly. So now, how much really the leeway the customer has to negotiate? Like, say, let's pick a number, like, you know, if I go there and dealership offers, you know, okay, this car is for $50,000. Mm -hmm. And I am very firm that, you know what, I'm not going to pay, I like the car, I'm not going to pay fifty thousand dollars. How much leeway I will have? It all depends again, uh, and that's a ve it, very good question. I mean, a any vehicle we could work with a few thousand dollars at, at, a, at a minimum, mm -hmm. unless there's high demand on that car, inventory is very low, mm -hmm. it will drive the price up. But again, being full disclosure, we will openly tell clients, you know, if that's the type of deal you're looking for, this isn't the right car at this point in time. Right. If you are looking for that type of deal, or this is your budget these are all the new models we should look at right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm even open to the extent where if it's not the best time to get that exact car, mm -hmm. we'll openly tell our clients, mm -hmm. especially anyone from the Indian community. Sure. <laughs> now, uh, let's talk to about some other luxury models which are very popular in Absolutely, the Indian yeah. and South Asian community. Yeah. So what are the other models which come to your mind? So Mercedes. Of course. Audi. Sure. Um, Lexus. Mm -hmm. uh, they're generally the main brands that we are shopped against. Mm -hmm. um, and like I tell people, they all make great cars. I am mm. uh, certainly got an affection for BMW, mm -hmm. but if someone wants a Mercedes or they want an Audi or they want another car, through our network at Herb Chambers Companies, we can offer them a service to meet directly with the general managers and mm. get a great price, get the right car that they want, and help them out with a very easy, quick, pleasant experience. Now, what is your message to the Indian and South Asian community who wants to buy a, a luxury car? Well, first and foremost, come to BMW of Sudbury. Okay. <laughs> but more importantly, 
um, work with us. If you email me, you're, um, I'll provide you my email and sure. contact sure. information sure. after our meeting today. You can shoot me an email. And we'll get the vehicles pulled up for you before you come in. Make test drives very simple and really have a no-hassle purchase experience. We full disclosure, give you all the information, almost an information overload. Whether you want ratings, you want crash test ratings, you want reviews, you want other options, and we'll even help you cross shop them against other brands if you'd like. So, Pranav, uh, let us talk a little bit about your personal background. Sure. Um, you, you were born in Austria. Have you... Yeah, so my uh, parents were born in India. Um, we're in India. So yeah. my mom's side is from Bombay okay. or um, Mumbai, mm -hmm. and my dad's side is from New Delhi. We're mm -hmm. all Punjabi. Mm -hmm. Um, after they got married, we moved to Austria, mm -hmm. or they moved to Austria, and mm -hmm. they lived there for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. I was, and what they were doing there in Austria? So they were in the hotel and service industry. Okay. Uh, that's what my dad studied and my mom studied in, back in India, and they had some friends in Austria, mm -hmm. which led them there. So they lived there for 15 years, uh, and then we moved here back in 1985. Mm -hmm. So I was about five years old. I was a little Indian boy that walked into school speaking German mm -hmm. at that point no in time. Idea. So yeah. it definitely caught the teachers off guard then. Mm -hmm. um, after getting here, my parents worked in the Indian restaurants mm -hmm. and eventually started their own Indian restaurant. So which restaurant and they started? So they had Anjali Indian Cuisine, which was over in Framingham for mm -hmm. many years. And mm -hmm. after my mother had gotten sick, they decided to close down the restaurant mm -hmm. to really focus on taking care of her. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and so ever and did you go to school and college here in Boston? I did. So I went to Nichols College, which is out uh, near Connecticut. Okay. It's a business school. Mm -hmm. I graduated with a bachelor's uh, mm -hmm. from there, pursuing my master's as well uh, mm -hmm. in the short term now. Did you also help your uh, mom and dad at the restaurant? Or? I did. I, I remember, you know, days right after. It, the bad part was the restaurant was within walking distance of our high school. Okay. So I had okay. no excuse. Okay. So every day after school, I'd uh, go walk down to the restaurant, and mm. we would help them out with setting up and cleaning up uh, after the luncheon mm -hmm. uh, crowd and getting everything ready for the dinner crowd. So are you the only child of your... Uh, no, so I have a little sister. Her name is Vibhuti. Okay. And uh, she's 26 years old, uh, a nurse. Okay. And uh, doing really well for herself. I have a beautiful wife, Shivani. Mm -hmm. And we recently, uh, uh, not recently, about a year ago, had our son, Curran, who is oh, turning okay. one year next month. Excellent. Yeah. And how did you meet your wife? So I met her at Lexus. Her dad, Lexus. her dad was a customer there. Okay. And uh, we had met a couple times when, when she was in the dealership for service. And obviously, one as you know, one thing. So was, this was in Sudbury or some other? No, this was in Norwood, still working for Herb Chambers. It was the first store I started at. And, okay. Uh, she's a beautiful Indian girl that walked in one day, and I said, wow, I'd really like to get to know her. Okay. The rest is history. We so ended what up did getting, you do? What are your first steps? Uh, first step to... In that direction to court her. In, in the direction to court her, well, I tried to sell her dad another car. <laughs> okay. You give so, him a good, good discount. So we, we started uh, talking a car deal only to really get to know her a little bit better. And then I asked her out to dinner and surprisingly she said yes. <laughs> oh, so, this is a good Valentine story. Valentine <laughs> good Valentine story. story. Uh, she said yes and we dated for a few years and then... Uh, I was lucky enough to marry her. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Congratulations, and again, thank you very much. Thank you very much.